I've been using Linux for about 15 years, possibly more, can't remember quite honestly. Um, and in that time, I've seen various distros come out with the intention of trying to encourage people to switch from Microsoft Windows to Linux. And they've done this by giving uh, or attempting to give a familiar desktop environment to what the previous user would have had with uh, Windows. These have came and they've gone. Um, we've had ones trying to look like Windows 7. We've had ones trying to look like Windows 8. For God's sakes, I don't know why, but we have. Um, we've had ones trying to look like Windows 10. We're going to see one that looks or tries to look like Windows 11 in a minute. But first, we're looking at this one, which is trying to remind us of Windows 7. This is Commander Linux 1. And when you boot it up, this is a live system. I'm not going to install these. You get a welcome, which tells you what it is. A quick introduction. Let's, let's have a look at that. Congratulations on installing Commander Linux. Here's a quick overview of how to use it. You change your user account image, click on start, and click on your current. Okay, so that's pretty neat. It opens a full screen um, video in VLC. That's cool. Uh, we don't need to watch all of that. If you're really that interested, download the ISO. There's a link to it on DistroWatch and um, give it a goo. Learn more. It just basically tells you about some of the software, which is a great way of introducing people to the free options that uh, the GNU Linux world can offer them uh, okay the updates final release etc etc so this was June 15th 2023 um, list of patrons and donators some acknowledgements um, yeah beautiful Windows 7 lookalike login screen is from a project called Win7 Mint for WebKit Lite DM created by Jose Ailton on GitHub and a link to it there, of course, very good. Oh, also the icons, okay, humanity classic, oxygen theme. I mean, when did you last see folders like this? Mouse cursors, aero mouse, now it just looks like normal mouse pointer to me. And the theme is X aero XFWM4 Windows 7 slash Vista theme modified slightly. Um, Profile images, blah, blah, blah. Background images. Uh, oh, well, let's have a look. This is XFCE, of course. So here's the wallpapers. Nice, I suppose. So this is from the Philippines. And I guess, is that a GP? I don't know. Uh, well, what was the device? Let's go back to that. Okay. Yeah, so it's XFCE, of course. Um, and shout outs, blah blah blah, to my man Esnix for creating the video on how to create an ISO using Debian Live Build. Nice one, Es. All right, dedications to Aaron Swartz. Um, what is it? One of Reddit's founders and among many other great achievements, legendary fighter of, fighter of freedom, etc. Don't know about Aaron Swartz, I'm afraid. Terry A. Davis, I do know, I do know of Templo S. Yeah, um, strange fella, Jack Trammell. No, yeah, yeah, founder of Commodore, later bought Atari and launched the Atari ST. And uh, the ST was actually the initials of Sam Trammell, as much I guess would be his son. Uh, Ian Murdoch, uh, the Ian of Deb Ian. Okay because Debian was named after this guy and his missus. Another suicide. Three suicides in the dedications list. Hmm, okay. So yeah, yeah, Philippines. Okay, so that's the welcome screen. Let's close this, what do you get? We've already decided it's um, XFCE on a window, uh, on a Windows. Good God, I've almost fallen for it. Let's see what this gives us. Yeah, okay. 
it's Debian. So it's based on Bullseye, so it's based on Debian 11. So, yeah, it's based on the last stable, so it's based on old stable. Okay. Um, shame that they should be releasing something built, built on old stable when we've now got the new stable with uh, Bookworm, but that's how it is. And, yep, yeah, I don't know, it looks nice. It looks nice. If you want that Windows 7 look, which is it's kind of nice, isn't it? Obviously, the icons are a little bit wrong. I'd say a lot wrong for Windows 7. But, I don't know. It's evocative of when Windows was still a little bit kinder on your hardware. And still a lot of people would agree that Windows 7 was the last good Windows. What do you get? Well, I've not installed anything. I'm recording this on Kazam. That takes me back. Um, so you get a whole bunch of accessories, the usual XFCE stuff. Um, bottles for running Windows software. Under development, you get Deep Beaver CE, Universal Database Manager uh, and SQL Client. You get Genie, you get Insomnia, Collaborative API Design Tool, VS Codium. Code editing redefined, so they're pretty unique, except for Genie. Under Education, LibreOffice, Math, Games, 2048, Chess, Commodore 64, Emulator, nice, uh, DOSBox Emulator, really good, Mahjong, Mines, Pybic, a Rubik's Cube, cube thing, Sliding Puzzle, Snakes, SNES 9, Super Nintendo Emulator, um, Solitaire, Ah, a decompilation of 3D Pinball for Windows, Space Cadet. You get the Steam installer, and you get Tetris. Let's have a look at this. Uncanny. <laughs> what was it? It was the shift keys, wasn't it? What are the flipper controls? What are the flipper controls? Uh, interesting. Ah. Okay, Z and forward slash. Fantastic. Oh, enough, enough. So that was quite cool. Um, that was under games, under graphics. You get Blender, Draw IO, Document Scanner. You get the GIMP. You get an image viewer. You get the Inkscape. Nice to have Inkscape and GIMP by default. And Blender, I suppose, if you're into that sort of stuff. And Internet. FileZilla, Firefox, Google Chrome. 
putty ssh client thunderbird to install this doesn't come pre-installed but it's a link to install it you get the transmission BitTorrent client under multimedia you get the option to install arda 7 you get audacity you get the chance to install blanket listen to different sounds I'm not sure what that's all about uh, you get the kazam thing for screencasting which is what i'm using now you get caden live straight off the bat so i mean this is a pretty good all-round desktop system anyway you get the vlc media player under office you get LibreOffice base calc draw impress math and writer you get the whole shebang and you get the hub for launching everything and then your usual xfc stuff under the system folder but you also get back in time for doing your backups cpux for gathering information on your cpu motherboard and more it's a bit like um uh, um Inksy. okay um you get virtual box um dun, dun, dun. and time shift so there you have it it's a windows 7 looky likey and if you want to run linux and pretend you're running windows this might be an option because you can always bump it forward into the new stable by just changing some repos and doing the old reboot all right that'll do for that um, and now we'll move on to the next one okay i'm currently on the second windows looky likey now this is my third attempt to at doing this video because for the simple reason that this is basically it's based on kubuntu jammy jellyfish um, it's got loads of links to the online microsoft office apps and everything it's got a few microsoft apps already installed um, but it's also got this thing windows ubuntu register now when i click that to go open it opens this dialog Oh, let's go pick this one where you have to enter a product key after buying a license to use effectively kubuntu and also when you open that if you're doing a screencast to show that you have to do that it deletes your screencast and closes the video folder so i took a screenshot and now i'm doing the video just to make sure i get to keep the video i'm doing because you should see this so right we'll continue and hopefully everything will go fine so as you see it strives and succeeds to some extent to look like windows 11. it's got the pinned apps here it's got recommended apps um, which seem to be things that i've previously opened you can go to all apps and then you get them in the al al uh, alphabetical order um, video activity log manager, advanced network configuration, anti micro X arc, cheese device manager, discover display configuration, dolphin, Alisa music player, pretty good, gotta admit, you can get that on most distros and it's really worth a look. Emoji selector, all the stuff that you would generally find on a plasma desktop, including all of the K apps. Well, not all of them, but a hell of a lot of them. And you also get a Linux FX store. So this is what previously I think was calling itself Linux FX. And um, that has got its little habit of charging you for a license key to use what is effectively an Ubuntu build. They're free to do that, but I don't like it. You've got your menu editor and you've got all this Microsoft stuff, Microsoft Calendar Online, Microsoft Excel Online, OneNote Online. Now these are just shortcuts to um, web pages. These are probably uh, site-specific browser pages that open up um, if you click on these. But you've also got what it calls Microsoft PowerShell, which is console. It opens in console anyway. Um, you've got Microsoft Teams, which is great if you want other people getting their claws in your system. You get Muon as well as Discover, which is strange. And you get only Office as a local Office operating um, uh, word processor, PowerPoint, etc., etc., kind of things. 
um, Pavo Control, Remote Desktop Client, Uninstalled Simple Screen Recorder, you get all the other stuff like Steam, fine. Synaptic Package Manager, okay, so you've got Synaptic, you've got Muon, and you've got Discover, that's three, to get you going for installing your software. So that's cool. You've got System Monitor, Settings, Text Info, U Launcher, VLC Media Player, Webcamoid, which is the second um, webcam app on this. There's the notorious Windows Ubuntu register, which I'm definitely not going to click because it deletes my video. And you've got your, your Ubuntu Power Toys update. So look, it's KDE Plasma. It's the Ubuntu base. It's essentially a themed version of Kubuntu, and they want to charge you for a license key for it. If you really want to be on Windows that much, just use the Windows that's come already on your uh, on your laptop. If your laptop is a few years old and cannot run Windows 11 and you really must run something that your friends will all think, possibly, is Windows 11, this might be worth your time, but paying for a license key for an open source operating system, I don't know, it's pretty low. And that's the end of this video. I've seen enough garbage for one day.